Figma's pen tool is extremely powerful, so today I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know about it and how you can start using it like a pro. Let's jump in. You can find the pen tool in the tab bar over here, or you can just click on P on your keyboard to get it. Your pointer will change to the pen once you do this. If we left click, we create our first node or point, and you'll see that our design panel changed and the tab bar changed as well. If we just move our mouse anywhere and click again, we will create our first line because between two points, you get a path or a line. Now, as I keep going, I create more points, which creates more of a shape. And if you look at the layers panel, you'll see that I'm creating a vector right now. So if I click on V to get back to my normal pointer and click on done, you will see that I have now created this vector. What if I want to create another line or another node, but I don't want it to be connected to this one, but I still want it to be inside the same vector. All I need to do is click on escape and then I can create something else here, click on done, and both of these are the same vector, but they're not connected. If I want to add another point or a node onto a path that already exists, I can double click into it, grab the pen tool, and then when I hover over the path, you see that I get the plus icon next to the pen. When I click on it, it will just add another point along that same path. What we have now are just paths that don't really connect to each other. But what if I want to create a closed path? I'm going to delete this, click on P, and then I'm just going to hold down shift to get straight lines and do some sort of rectangle. You see when I'm hovering over this node, which is the node that will close this path, I get a little circle icon next to my pen. That means that I have now created a shape that is closed. Now I can add a fill, for example. What if I want to create a shape that has multiple overlapping areas and multiple areas that could be filled? Let's see how we do that. Click on P. I'm just going to drag a bunch of lines over here to create some sort of overlapping and I'm going to close it. So if I click on V just to get the pointer, if I add a fill color, you see it's going to add that fill everywhere that it's finding a closed path but I want each of these to be a different color. I'm just gonna remove that. I can go to my paint bucket tool over here. I can also click on B. If I click on that one, and then when I hover over different closed sections, you see I get that blue line. That means that this is a place that it can fill. So I can click on that, give it some color that I want. This one has this color. And this way I also don't have to fill all of them. And when I click on done and I'm outside, you can see all of the different fill colors in the selection colors on the design panel, which means I can control them individually and I don't have to have just one color for all of my closed sections. Up till now, we've only been creating straight lines, but what if I want to make a curved line? There's a few ways of doing that. Let's look at that now. If I remove all of these, click on P and then I'm just going to draw a straight line. We know how to do that, right? We click here and then we click down here. But before you click, I want you to click and hold your mouse down and just move it around and see what happens. So this allows me to create a bend. This is one of the amazing features of the pen tool. This curve is kind of moving around as I move around while always holding down my mouse. If I let go and click on V just to get to my move tool, you can see I get two of these handles over here coming out of this node and I get another handle over here. Now, each handle will control one side of the path coming out of my node. So for example, if I move this one around, you will see this path kind of move and curve accordingly. If I move this one, nothing's gonna happen because there's no path coming out of this side. If I click on P, I'm gonna, you see there's already kind of a path waiting for me. I put that down here, click on V again, and now you see that this handle controls kind of the other side of the node. So that's one way. Another way is doing it after you already have the path created. Over here in the toolbar, you'll notice that we have some different functions. And right next to our creation tools, we have the bend tool. If I select the bend tool, now I can curve this line. I can do it by selecting anywhere within the path and then just dragging it around or I'm going to command Z, I can also click on the actual node and that will give me a handle. So I'll just zoom in so you can see that a bit better. Right now I have two normal nodes here. I'm on the bend tool. You can also click on command to get to it. Once I click on a node, I suddenly have a handle now, which means that I can move this around and curve it however I want. Notice that if the handle is short, the curve is small. If the handle is long, the curve is much deeper. I want to show you a really cool trick with the bend tool and with just the handles in general. If you look over here in our design panel, you get this drop down that has three options. There's no mirroring, mirror angle, and mirror angle and length. You know how we saw before that the handles can go on either side of the node and kind of affect both sides of the paths coming out of the node? Well, this is what that does exactly. Let me show you a 
cool way of using this. If I just remove this path, I'm gonna zoom out a bit, click on P, and then just create a straight line. Now I'm gonna create a node at the middle of this line, and you see I get the red kind of indicator that I am in the middle. I'm gonna to go to the toolbar and select my bend tool, and then make sure that I'm selecting mirror, angle, and length. If I tap on my middle node now, I'll get handles on both sides. And if I select one of these handles and start to move it, you see the other side will respond in the exact same way. So I can create this nice kind of wave, and that's because they are mirrored. If I don't mirror them and I say no mirroring, if I click on my just move tool and then just move this one, you see it's not mirroring it, it's not doing the same thing on the other side. If I command Z and do mirror, angle and length, now I can select this and the other one will move accordingly. We spoke about adding nodes, curving the path, but what if I wanna delete one? What if I decide that I wanna remove this node? So if I just click on it and click on escape or delete, it's gonna remove it, but at the same time, it's gonna break the path. And that's because if I command Z, you see deleting this node means that this path gets deleted as well as this one. But if I don't wanna do that, Figma has an amazing option called heal. If I hold down shift, select this node and then delete. Instead of removing the path, Figma just heals the vector. Okay, it said you don't want this node anymore, fine. I'm gonna find a way of kind of healing that for you to help you out. With all of the things that we've just learned, we can basically recreate any shape that's in our shape tool. Because for example, if I drop an ellipse in here and I double click on it, you can see that now it's giving me the same toolbar as the pen tool because it's exactly the same. It's also using nodes. Let's create this perfect circle for ourselves right now. So I'm gonna just double click to get out of there, click on P and then gonna drop in a node, holding down shift to create a straight line. I'm gonna do a sort of diamond. So I'm waiting for it to snap over there snap over here and close it. Great. Now I'm going to click on the bend tool and set it to mirror angle and length, which means that it gives me the same sort of curve on both sides of the node. Going to click on this node, this node, this node, and this node, and boom. I have now created a perfect circle. If you ever want to practice using the pen tool, you can go into this website called the Bezier game, which basically makes a game out of following um, the path that's already created and using the pen tool to do that. It helps you to use the different keyboard shortcuts and use curves and it gets harder as it goes along. So now that you've mastered the pen tool, you can go ahead and create your own vectors and amazing designs. Make sure to check out my Passive Income for Designers video where you could definitely use vectors to create your own little stickers and then sell them online anywhere. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.